Heidi ho Hilltoppers. How are you? Mr. Snyder here. Uh, it's been a while since I saw you last. I hope everybody is safe and healthy. Uh, I thought because I haven't seen you in so long, uh, I would do a quick little video art project uh, for those of you that might be looking for some creative outlets. Uh, I'm going to show you really quick what we're going to do. We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about op art. Uh, this is my black and white version and then this is my color version. Uh, so if this is something that you Feel like you might be interested in learning how to do uh, i'm going to let you go ahead and grab the materials that you're going to need you will need a marker of some sort i'm going to use a sharpie uh, you might want a pencil i'm not really going to use one but i know some students like to draw in pencil first so you can do that uh, you're also going to need obviously a sheet of white paper uh, this is just regular copy paper uh, any type of paper is fine i did cut it down into more of a square uh, i feel like it looks better than your standard regular rectangular uh, sheet of copy paper. So as I mentioned, if this is something that you'd like to learn, uh, by all means, go grab those materials. I'll wait for you. Also grab yourself a drink and uh, maybe a little snack. I've got my Ninja coffee mug here. And uh, when you come back, we'll get ready to go. All right, so let's start by answering the question, what is op art? And op art is basically art that's created by artists who use geometric patterns, uh, intricate lines, colors, and designs to create art that looks as though it's actually moving. Uh, it works very similar to an optical illusion. In fact, that's exactly what it is, an optical illusion. Uh, many times these patterns look like they might be vibrating or parts of the images might be popping in or out. Um, most art, when you look at it, it conveys some type of feeling or emotion. When you look at a painting, sometimes you might feel sad. Or if you look at a photograph, it might convey the feeling of happiness. Uh, these paintings are a little different in the fact that they actually create physical feelings. Um, for instance, it looks like, it feels like your eyes are vibrating if you look at the images. It can sometimes create a sense of dizziness, or even in some extreme cases, a little bit of queasiness in the belly. We're gonna create an optical illusion like this one here, where it looks like the sheet of paper is kind of undulating in and out. It's almost like these round tubey waves are being created. And it's hard to tell that this is actually just a plain old flat sheet of paper. All right, so I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step on how to create this, and then uh, I'll show you the different coloring options that you can choose um, as you move along in the project. Okay, so to create these, designs, you're basically going to start in the center point of your paper and then work your way out. It's almost like a pinwheel design. So I'm going to break it down here for you. Uh, let me just set these off here to the side. All right. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to start right away with a Sharpie and I'm going to pick somewhere in the center of my uh, paper and I'm going to create six lines that curve. All right. So I'm going to start here in the center, one, and I'm not going to go all the way to the edge of the paper, two, they all curve in the same direction and they create kind of this pinwheel design. All right, from there, inside each of these triangular sections of the pinwheel, I'm going to create a series of rounded lines that curve towards the opening or towards the outside edge of the paper. Uh, I'm going to start right in the center and just start creating these curved lines. Now notice that each of these lines, they always start by connecting to the last line. And then there's a little bit of separation as I curve them. All right, so I'm going to continue this until I get all the way to the end of the pinwheel. Not the end of the paper. The end of the pinwheel. It looks like I can go a little bit farther. All right, I'm not gonna worry about that little section right there. This is the first section. I have five more sections to go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do those. Okay, so I have branched off my little circles or my little curved lines until they got all the way to the end of the pinwheel. 
And you can see it's really those curved lines that create that illusion that the paper is bending or kind of curving around uh, the surface. All right, the next step is to continue to fill in the white space so that the curved lines go all the way to the edges of the paper. Uh, the way I do this is I like to do just a little bit at a time and just keep rotating around the design. So what I like to do is three lines on each part of the pinwheel, turn it, do another three lines, do another three lines until I get my design going all the way to the edges of the paper. All right. All right, so there it is, all drawn out. Now you could actually leave it just like this. I think that this looks really, really cool as it is. Uh, but if you want to add color, like you can see here, I colored in uh, with just black and white. Uh, the contrast really makes the undulations pop and stand out. Or you could do it with color. And here I use colored pencils, and I'll show you that technique as well. It's the curved lines in the patterns that give the illusion, the optical illusion, hence the name op art, that the uh, parts of the paper are undulating or raised up or actually moving. It's that repetition of the line and the shapes that create the pattern, which also creates a rhythm or a sense of movement, all right, which is really neat to see. Uh, we're gonna emphasize that by coloring it. Uh, the first one we're gonna do is the uh, black and white one and black and white works really well in optical illusions because that stark contrast of the black and the white really help make that pattern pop okay uh, and so the way we're gonna do this is you have to be extra careful when you color uh, because you don't want to screw this up especially if you're gonna do it in Sharpie because if you screw it up you could mess up the pattern uh, the optical illusion may not work as well so one of the things I'm gonna do here is I'm going to pick one of the sections to start with and then I'm gonna color in every other stripe. Uh, I'm gonna leave the first section open, the first little uh, triangle there at the very beginning, and I'm gonna color in the second, leave the third, color in the fourth, leave the fifth, color in the sixth, and I'm gonna continue that as I move towards the outside edge of the paper. All right, so I'm now gonna continue and color the next section. Same idea, uh, I can either do the exact same stripes in this section or I can alternate it. I found that it really doesn't make a difference. Uh, the biggest thing is you wanna make sure you really take your time coloring, make sure you're coloring in the right section uh, because again, you want this pattern to look as perfect as possible. So take your time, don't rush. Okay, and uh, so there's that section. I'm gonna continue that for the next four sections and when it's done, hopefully, it'll look something similar to this. And this would be your black and white op art uh, pinwheel design, I guess we'll call it, all right? Uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do the color version. It's a little different because with the color version, uh, we're adding in some highlights and some shadows. Uh, it's completely up to you, the colors you want to use. You could use one color and color the whole thing that one color. You could do two colors and then have them alternate. Uh, we also just finished talking about the color wheel in seventh grade. You could color it in the same order as the color wheel. This one is not, but it does have all of the main colors of the color wheel. It's completely up to you. Uh, the big thing is the technique and how you do this. I'm going to pick one color, and I'm going to color in every other section like I did in the black and white. But this time, I'm not gonna color the whole stripe in. I'm gonna press firm on the edges of the stripe, on the corners, but then when I get towards the center, I'm gonna lighten my pressure. You can see it more as I get to the bigger stripes. And actually, in the center of that stripe, I'm gonna leave it white. And by leaving it white, it creates the illusion, the optical illusion, that the stripe is actually rounded and it looks like a highlight. It helps add to the optical illusion.
Colored pencils are really great to use when coloring because you can do so many different techniques. By applying different pressure, you're allowed to create different values of that color, which could create some really amazing pieces of art. So again, near the corners, I'm pressing firm and then lighting my pressure, lightening my pressure as I move towards the center. Again, just make sure that you're staying in the right color sections. All right, all right, I'm gonna move on to another color here. I'll do green, I'm gonna work right next to where I just did with the blue. Same idea. Now here, if you wanted to, you could alternate the stripes. So instead of doing the exact same stripes in this section, I could do the opposite stripes. I'm gonna keep it the same though. It's up to you. I'm doing the same technique, pressing firm in the corners and then lightening my pressure as I get towards the middle. I hope I'm not shaking the table too much. I apologize if I am. Okay, so there is my next section. I'll do the next four sections. Again, I could do a blue, green, blue, green, blue, green and move my way around. Uh, or I could pick different colors, however I wanna do it. But when you're done, you shall have something that looks similar to this with the different highlights going through it. It just helps add to that whole optical illusion effect. All right, so this is how you create your optical illusion pinwheels. All right. All right, so I hope you liked the lesson. Uh, I am planning to do more, so I hope that you'll tune in the next time that I post another art project. Uh, I'd love to see these finished products. Uh, you can email them to me. I'll put the email somewhere on the screen here. Uh, most of you also know that I have an Instagram and a Facebook page. You could always send them to me privately there as well. Um, and uh, until then, keep on creating and uh, again, Stay, uh, stay safe and stay healthy. All right, take care, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.